Hello my dear students, today I am going to demonstrate the transfer section of the forearm. This section is taken in the midway between elbow and the wrist joint to show various compartments of the forearm. On the medial side, just beneath the skin, there is a superficial vein which is the basilic vein. And when you see this cross section of the middle of the forearm, we can identify two important bones, ulna and the radius. Ulna on the medial side and radius on the lateral side. So in between the ulna and the radius, the structure is called as interosseous membrane, which is also seen clearly. And here is the thumb, which represents it is on the lateral aspect. And we know that the little finger is on the medial aspect. So to understand the anatomy well, you should know that the forearm is divided into two compartments, anterior compartment and the posterior compartment. And these compartments are formed by septa, which are derived from deep fascia. And remember that because of the presence of numerous muscles, anterior compartment of the forearm is bulkier than the posterior compartment. So in this section, we can see that the anterior compartment of the forearm is also called as flexor compartment. So this compartment shows two deep muscles, especially one is the flexor digitorum profundus and another important muscle is the flexor pollicis longus. And we know that the flexor digitorum profundus is along the anterior surface of the ulna. And the flexor pollicis longus is adherent to the anterior surface of the radius. So here in this image, we cannot see the pronator quadratus, which is a deeper muscle of the forearm because it is present in the distal part of the forearm. Therefore, we cannot see that muscle in this picture. And not only these two muscles, we can also see four superficial muscles. We shall name them, especially from medial to lateral, so that it is easy for you to remember. The first medial most muscle is the flexor carpi ulnaris, which is present on the ulnar aspect of the forearm. And the flexor digitorum superficialis, which is superficial to the profundus muscle. And also we could appreciate the tendon of the palmaris longus. And at last, the flexor carpi radialis. All these are the four muscles which are present, which are well appreciated in this image. And remember a point, like pronator quadratus, which is not seen because which is present on the distal aspect, pronator teres is also not seen because which is also a superficial muscle. And in this section, we cannot see this because it is taken below the insertion of the pronator teres. Therefore, the two important muscles called as pronator teres and pronator quadratus cannot be seen in this picture. Along with flexor carpi radialis, on its lateral side, a neurovascular bundle is seen which comprises of radial artery and superficial branch of the radial nerve which are underneath the brachioradialis muscle. And remember a point here that the superficial branch of the radial nerve provides sensory innervation to much of the back of the hand. And the nerve which is present deeper to the flexor carpi ulnaris is the ulnar nerve. So we know that the ulnar nerve supplies flexor carpi ulnaris and also the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus because the lateral half is supplied by the median nerve and rest of all the muscles of the anterior compartment are innervated by median nerve and its deeper branch known as anterior interosseous nerve. And let us concentrate on the artery which is seen here. The artery which is seen on the lateral side of the ulnar nerve that is in relation to the flexor digitorum profundus is the ulnar artery. And we know that the radial as well as the ulnar arteries are the terminal branches of the brachial artery. And another neurovascular bundle is seen in front of the interosseous membrane, which contains anterior interosseous nerve, 
an anterior interosseous artery. So what is the anterior interosseous nerve here? Anterior interosseous nerve is the deep branch of the median nerve which supplies deep muscles in the flexor compartment except medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus which is supplied by the ulnar nerve. And in the distal part of the forearm, the anterior interosseous artery pierces the interosseous membrane to reach the extensor compartment. Now let us understand the posterior extensor compartment after discussing in detail about the anterior flexor compartment. So the two deep muscles which are seen along with the bones are extensor pollicis longus and abductor pollicis longus. These are the two muscles. So the extensor pollicis longus is adherent to the ulna. And another important muscle which is abductor pollicis longus is along the radius. So let us try to see the arrangement of muscles in superficial extensor group. Try to learn these muscles from lateral to the medial side. So concentrate on the image so that you can understand and you can demarcate the muscles really well because sometimes in the exam once you come across these cadaveric images you should know about the orientation of the image and the methodology of identifying the structures present. So the lateral most muscle is a brachioradialis. Remember the lateral most muscle is brachioradialis. And the muscle along the posterior aspect of the radius is extensor carpi radialis longus. And the next one is extensor digitorum. And then the muscle is the extensor digiti minima. And the one next to the ulna, we know that it is extensor carpi ulnaris. So these are the muscles which are arranged from lateral to the medial side. So there is a neurovascular bundle in the posterior compartment too that is in the facial plane between superficial and deep muscles of the posterior compartment which mainly consists of a posterior interosseous nerve and posterior interosseous vessels. So let us talk a few points regarding the posterior interosseous nerve here. So the posterior interosseous nerve which is otherwise called as dorsal interosseous nerve which is the nerve of extensor compartment of the forearm, which supplies most of the muscles in the posterior compartment except anconius, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, because these are innervated by radial nerve. So remember, it is the continuation of the deep branch of the radial nerve. And superficial branch and posterior interosseous nerve, that is deep branch, are the two terminal branches of the radial nerve. So this you can study in the radial nerve video. And by this, we have completed successfully about demonstrating the beautiful cross-section image of the forearm in its midway. Thank you so much for listening.